Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. It's parka pillar season. So, got a block here with a trash bore where I dropped the valve and scuffed up the cylinder walls. So, I gotta bore this out and put a sleeve in it. Uh, the rest of these holes, I'm not doing anything to them. This is number one. Uh, if I was doing all these, it would be in I would typically uh, indicate in this edge here where it's machined so that I knew it was square this way, but that's not important in this case because I don't need to keep this bore centered with this bore center. Uh, if this thing's tilted one way or another, it won't matter because I'm going to indicate this bore center to put it back. I'm not referencing off any of these others or the bore spacing. So the only thing that matters here is that the head deck surface is square to the mill. So when I bore the hole, it lines back up with the crankshaft like it's supposed to. Which of course assumes that the factory did it right and they've got the head deck square to the crankshaft center line. Whether they do or not, I don't know. And I'm not going to check it because this is not a race engine and it ran before, so if I put the hole back where it was, it'll run again. So, I'll uh, come over here and take my indicator and sweep this thing and see if I need to turn it. I will show you. In order to get this thing fairly square, the uh, rear face of the block is machined so I've got it sitting on a set of one two three blocks to space it up because those uh, dowel pins down there would uh, hit the table otherwise I could come over and drop it in the slot but this cast boss on the back here prevents me from being able to do that that's the way I normally like to do them, but these blocks aren't cast to be able to do that. So I got to sit it up on those blocks instead. Now I've got some really long tie bolts tying this thing down. Realistically, if I tighten these way up, I could probably crush some of these bores out around, but it would be a very minimal amount. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it doing that because I wouldn't clamp it that hard. I just need to keep it true. But it's certainly something you don't want moving on you while you're cutting because that's how you junk stuff. So I've got my stop blocks set up against the pan rail on the bottom. And I'll use my jack bolts to turn and adjust the squareness of the deck if I need to. So I'm ready to check it. Let's see how close it is. It should be close. I do need to clean off here for my indicator. So, otherwise, all this gasket material and stuff will make a big mess. So, just ammonia.
like y'all lucked out this time. You don't get to watch the boring, boring. But uh, got the bore cut. You can tell by what's left of the ledge down in there that it was good and straight. So we'll get over here with the torch and heat this daddy up and see if I can get this liner shoved in there. Got a nice finish.
cleaned it up and ready to go back to the customer. So, looks a lot better than it did after going through the parts washer. Oh, kind of looks like it's been leaking. The antifreeze up in here might be porosity in that casting. Sweating out. I don't see anything else where it would leak there. But that's not this job. You can barely see the ring there from the liner put in there. So got the cylinder wall all fixed up. It looks a little funny, it's because it's got the residue from the parts washer on there, which gives it a little grace taste. So this will have to be cleaned up for final assembly, but that's the condition, or better condition than it was brought to me anyway. So I'm satisfied with how that looks going out of here. Uh, everything mics out okay after honing these cylinders to try to get the gouges from the damage out. You can't feel it anymore. You can see it a little bit, but it's uh, still within the wear limits. It's about midway between new and worn out, so be good for another round. Make it till the head comes apart again, probably. So these engines have got a lot of ring land wear in them. I assume that's from the EGR running all the soot in there, chewing them up. And I honed it pretty well all out. It doesn't indicate when you run over it, but you can still see it. That'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch y'all later. There's more.